The new trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home has been released, so let's talk about it. Now, my opinions on this movie so far is that it could be great, but until I see the final movie, I have nothing but doubts and fears about this film. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. So this movie continues from that credit scene that we got in Spider-Man Far From Home. Got my shoes! Not that one. That was stupid. This one. Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker. And now Mysterio has revealed to the whole world that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and I don't know if there is more to this scene, but it seems that Peter didn't even bother denying to the cops that he is Spider-Man. Listen, I did not kill Mysterio. The drones did. Lots of superheroes are accused of being a superhero all the time, and they usually deny it. Even Peter in the Spectacular Spider-Man show denied it, after Venom broke into the Daily Bugle and told everyone Peter Parker is Spider-Man. You want the wall crawler? No! Then here's a scoop! Peter Parker is Spider-Man! Peter Parker, are you Spider-Man? No, for the godzillionth time, no. That guy in black said different. You mean the guy calling himself Venom? Does that name inspire trust? Then how is it you're the only photographer getting pictures of the web slinger in action? But from what I can gather from this trailer, he doesn't deny it. And the world very quickly finds out that he is Spider-Man. And I wish that this movie would have stayed away from the multiverse thing for just a little longer. Because when you get down to it, Tom Holland has never gotten his own standalone Spider-Man movie where he has to rise up to the occasion and be a hero all on his own. In Homecoming, he had Tony Stark help him out a lot. In Far From Home, he had Nick Fury, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Happy by his side. And now he has Doctor Strange who, according to reports, is apparently going to be Peter Parker's new father figure. I mean, when is this Peter going to be able to go out on his own? He keeps relying way too much on other superheroes in his own movies, which honestly takes away from his own struggles and capabilities as Spider-Man. So I wish he would have just this one movie where his family and friends are in trouble and he has to figure a way out of this mess without the help of other superheroes. But no, we still haven't gotten that yet. It's like Marvel think that Tom Holland's Spider-Man is incapable of having his own movie or something. So regardless, Peter goes to Doctor Strange and then we get this childish joke. I think we're beyond you calling me, sir. Okay. Steven. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. These childish jokes do not fill me with confidence. Imagine if they give jokes like this to Dr. Octopus. I really bloody hope not. So Strange says that he will help Peter, but everyone will forget his secret. Peter apparently protests and hopes that some people will remember, such as Ned and MJ, and even his Aunt May for some reason. But the MCU's Peter doesn't shut up when this master magician tells him to, because MCU Peter is just an idiot. First the glasses, and now this. And then he ruins the spell and somehow they enter the multiverse. Now we need to wait to see the movie to know what's going on in this scene for sure because it would be way too convenient and even silly if this is what started the whole multiverse shenanigans. So I hope that the multiverse doesn't happen this easily and this clumsily because it almost comes across as forced. Anyway, from here we see the Sam Raimi Spider-Man villains being hinted at, one of which being Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin bomb with his laugh in the background, and the other is Alfred Molina as Dr. Octopus with some very unimpressive CGI mechanical arms. Those arms were most mostly practical in Spider-Man 2, and to this day, they still look amazing and so real. But here, they already look like fake and unimpressive CGI. We tried to make the tentacles practical whenever we could, um, because clearly that was always the, mo the most effective way of doing it. When they're real, they're real. There's no two ways about it. And apparently they're going to be doing some de-aging CGI on his face, and you can really tell that it definitely isn't finished yet. But anyway, Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man 2 is in this movie. And that scares me, because whatever your thoughts are on the MCU, everyone knows that at least these are the MCU versions of these characters. For those of us that don't like these newer versions, it's okay, we at least have the older versions that we can go back to and are still there. We can always go back to them and nothing about those versions that we like will change. But that all changes when they bring in the multiverse, because now Marvel are taking those older versions of the characters that we like, and if you are not a fan of the way the MCU handle their own characters, then you are going to be downright terrified of how they handle the beloved older characters. And if the rumours are true, this Dr. Octopus is the same Otto Octavius that died at the end of Spider-Man 2, and they are going to film a scene that shows him survive his death at the end of the movie. Yep, you heard me right. If you guys liked the ending that Sam Raimi gave to Otto Octavius, and the lesson that he taught Peter, and that very same lesson that Peter taught back to Octavius... Trying to do better. Well, being brilliant's not enough, young man. You have to work hard. Intelligence is not a privilege, it's a gift. And you use it for the good of mankind. You once spoke to me about intelligence. That it was a gift to be used for the good of mankind. A privilege. 
Well, this movie is rumored to go in and change the ending, just so they can bring him back to life and have him go against his redemption and be a villain again. Because, you know, making money trumps preserving a great story. So, yeah. Now the MCU have found a way to potentially mess up the older versions of these movies. This great death scene could no longer be a thing, and Dr. Octopus will most likely be a more shallow version of himself because... It's the MCU. You know that he is not going to be the more drama-filled character that Sam Raimi created in Spider-Man 2. And I think they might even do the same with Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. Although they can change the costume, I don't mind about that. I hope they change it to this, which is what originally was supposed to be in the first Spider-Man movie. My biggest hope is that they don't go to the Raimi-verse, but go to another universe where the Green Goblin and Doctor Octopus are alive and not dead. That way, they won't screw up the events of the two Raimi movies. But yeah, clearly I have a lot of thoughts and worries about how the MCU are going to handle these beloved characters who had a completely different style to the MCU, a more mature style, and I hope they don't turn these characters into generic MCU characters that quip and do bad jokes, or deviate from the arcs that they had in their own movies, and I sure hope that they don't do the same thing to Charlie Cox's Daredevil when he shows up in the movie. He's honestly too good for the MCU and should remain in an R-rated show, but my concluding thoughts on the movie going by the trailer is that it has two storylines. One, that Peter's secret identity is in danger, which could have been a whole movie in of itself giving him tons of growth and development, but in Instead, they decided to throw a Spider-Verse storyline in here as well, and now we have two big storylines in one film, even though I think both of these storylines should have their own movie. And it makes me wonder if Sony is behind this, or if it is the MCU, because we know that the MCU likes to play the long game, but Sony likes to shove as much things into one movie as possible. Just look at The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And remember, No Way Home is supposed to set up other sequels and spin-offs, several of which are supposed to be for Sony. So is it the MCU behind this and shoving two stories into one film? Or Sony, who, as usual, just can't help themselves and try to forcefully set up as much sequels as they can? Let me know in the comments below. And I really hope that when Octavius says, Hello, Peter. I really hope he's saying that to Tobey Maguire, because it means absolutely nothing to hear him say that to Tom Holland Spider-Man, because they have no history together. You would just expect the two to not recognize each other, and that's not the reaction you want Spider-Man to have to a villain such as Dr. Frickin' Octopus. So he needs to be talking here to Maguire. That would be the right way to do it. But that's just wishful thinking on my part. I doubt it's actually going to happen. So comment below, let me know what you guys think of this. I personally have had a lot of worries about this movie ever since it was announced. And even now, I still have a lot of worries. The film has the same director as the previous two Holland Spider-Man movies, and I just hope that he treats this movie with more maturity than the last two films, and treats the original characters with respect. And I really hope he doesn't give them any moments like this. <laughs> I thought this was the anti-gravity gun. What? No, that's that one. And don't forget, I'm going to be making a versus video of this movie, and that will complete my series of Spider-Man versus videos. Although I am reconsidering which of the Spider-Man movies I will be comparing to this Spider-Man No Way Home. So click that subscribe button and the bell right next to it so you'll be notified of when that happens. And if you want to see my live reaction to watching the trailer for this movie, then donate just one dollar to me on Patreon, and you can unlock all of my past and future trailer reactions. Thanks as always for watching, guys, and I will see all of you very soon. Take care.